praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, it is a day to praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to the God in the Midst radio broadcast. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this uh, four-day weekend, a three-day weekend, however many days I got off for the, uh, for the new year. I'm excited about the new year coming in and, and enjoying my family. And, and just having a good time together. Uh, God has blessed us this this um, New Year's season. I have a sister-in-law in town and her son, my nephew. And then I also have my, my granddaughter in town from Houston. And so I'm just excited having a good time with the family, watching football and, and just enjoying ourselves. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, but I'm excited today about this Sunday School lesson. So let us go now into the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us, dear Lord, than we have been to ourselves. And we just want to glorify you and magnify you and lift you up. You're so worthy of the praise. You, you, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and the sins of the world, Lord. And you raised him from the dead and you gave him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We praise you, God, because when you, uh, Jesus ascended up into heaven, the Lord, you did not leave us ho hopeless or helpless, but you sent back your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in each one of us who trust and believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit and how he leads and guides us, corrects us, and directs us, Lord. We we thank you right now, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just ask you to be true to your word where you say where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst, Lord. So be in the midst of us like right now. Let your spirit permeate this whole entire broadcast over Facebook and over over uh, uh, get them radio, Lord. Just touch right now in the name of Jesus, the Heavenly Father, that those that are listening now might might be encouraged, might be inspired, Lord, that they that they might even be saved, the Heavenly Father. And then those who are going to listen to it in the future be be done the same way, God, that you touch them as only you can. We love you, Lord, and we praise you this day, Lord. We give you glory, just and we plead your blood over everything right now in the name of Jesus, because we know that there's power in your blood. We love you, Lord. We praise you, and we give you all the glory and all of the honor. Bless now, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our lesson this morning, our lesson this morning comes from, from um, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And, uh, and I'm being inspired today um, to uh, see if I can get my uh, audio Bible to read this lesson for us. Amen. Amen. I'll, I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to turn the audio Bible up. I'm reading. It's being read out of the New Living Translation, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 16 of Ephesians chapter 4. Um, chapter 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. 
But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I wanted, I wanted uh, that, that reading to come out um, through, through the, uh, uh, this is the Bible gate. Um, audio reader off of the internet and um, giving them full credit because I don't want them to not let this broadcast be <laughs> be shared. Oh, hallelujah. So these are the scriptures we're going to look at verses 1 through 16 in Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, the title of today's lesson, it can have many titles, uh, we, but we're going to be talking about it from faith brings us together faith brings us together yeah yeah see it, it like i say it could have many different titles faith to unite uh we could talk about walking in unity all of this is included in this this passage of scripture our our uh, memory verse comes from the, the first three verses of the chapter uh, and i'm reading out of a new living I mean a new uh King James Version of the Bible. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you have been called with all lowliness, gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. Oh, hallelujah. That's our, that's our memory verse. And 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 that that verse, I, I I could just sit right here and just preach that verse all day long because it's all about that calling. It's all about the unity of the believers and 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 in the spirit and the bond of peace. Oh, hallelujah! And then our key concept for today is God gives us all special gifts to use for His glory. And God gives us all. I don't care who you are. If you are a child of the king, if you are a child of God, you, you have been given gifts to use for the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. And our message for kids today is real simple. Uh, um, we just have one, one, one statement for the, for the children. Our keys for kids is we are used, we are to use the gifts God has given us to tell others about Jesus and to love other Christians. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, if we could get that, we who are the children of God could understand that God has given us gifts to tell others about how good he's been to us, 
Have you gave your testimony? Have you been a witness for Christ that, that he woke you up this morning and he clothed you in your right minds, that he gave you a reasonable portion of health and strength? He put food on your table. He put clothes on your back. He put a roof over your head. He gave you transportation. He's giving you income that you might be able to be sustained here on this earth. Oh, if we could just tell you. Our story, when when the light bill was due and and, and, the, and the Lord showed up, when, when when we were about to run out of gas in our cars and, and Lord let that car go a little while longer till it got to where we were going. Oh, hallelujah. That, that's what we got to do. We got to tell folks how good the Lord has been to us. Tell them how he picked us up and turned us around and placed our feet on solid ground. To be able to give our testimony is one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave us. And then to love. To love. That's also the one of the greatest gifts. I don't know about you. I, I, I thought I knew how to love before I knew Jesus. But once I knew Jesus and the love that he has shown towards me, I really realized how much I didn't know about love. But now that I love Jesus, I know how much love costs. Love costs all. And he gave his all. Oh, hallelujah. I'm already getting started. I'm just trying to introduce the lesson here. Oh, hallelujah. So as we, our lesson aims for the day, as we look at this lesson, is to understand the significance of unity uh, to the identity of the church. We, 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 we it, this is very significant. I, 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 I the, just reading that passage brings me back to Jesus, uh, doing the Lord's Supper, and he told his disciples, you, you'll be known by the love that you have for one another. You'll be known by the love that you have for one another. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold off a little bit, but I got to say this right now. Oh, do we love one another in the church? Uh, do people know us by our love or do they know us by what we hate or do they know us by what we stand up against? How, how, how does, how does, how does the world know the church? Oh, have mercy. And then the biblical principles that we're going to look at today, we're going to explain why the appreciation of the diversity of individual gifts is critical to the unity of the church. Everybody. Everybody has a job. Everybody has a duty. Everybody has a gift that they can use to bring the church together to do what the Lord wants done. And then our daily application is to, to, to identify and use our unique spiritual gifts to advance the, the ministry of the church, the mission of the church. And so this lesson. We're going to outline it one way, but we're going to talk about it in another way, but it, it's okay. So our first part of our outline is reasons for unity. That's verses 1 through 6 of Ephesians chapter 4. Then we're going to look at the means to obtain unity, verses uh, uh, 7 through 11. And then the results of unity, verses uh, 12 through 16. So now... Uh, the background of this lesson, the background of this lesson is is centered around uh, Paul. Paul, Paul was writing to the Ephesians while under house arrest in Rome. He, he his testimony about Jesus had taken him away all the way to Rome, where he waited for his trial before Caesar. During this time, he sent this letter to the Ephesians to, to explain the great mysteries of the faith and specifically to talk about the mystery of the church. While the first part of the letter is, is a theological explanation, the latter part of the letter is a practical exhortation or encouragement. He's given us encouragement in this last part of the text. And so in today's lesson, Paul begins with the encouragement of the unity of unity in diversity. Uh, the, 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 the imagery of the body of Christ is, is powerful because it calls all believers to rise above Watchmen now rise above their individual circumstances 
and backgrounds to focus on Christ. I, I like to say it this way. Christ, Christ uh, 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 overrides uh, 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 our culture. Christ, Christ, Christ transcends our culture. It does not matter what our culture, our background is. God, God is more than that. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so the, the challenge, of course, is function as a unified body. So our, our differences won't matter. While the task of unity has not become an easy one over time, the need for it is urgent, as with Christ and those who were called in, in the first century. We, we got to come together as the church. Uh, we, we talk about ecumenical uh, 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 services where different denominations come together. And, but, 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 it, but it goes beyond just coming together in one place. It goes beyond just coming together to, to worship together. But it's, it's, it's coming together in unity to respect one another, to love on one another, to have peace between one another, no matter what. Uh, 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 our differences might be, whether they're cultural, financial, economical, all of that stuff, we still have to come together as one body of believers in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And I, I, I know, I know, I know that there, there is um, a divisiveness that we have experienced in 2017 in America like never before. Uh, not to talk politically, but but this divisiveness does start at the White House, and and it has went all the way down to the last house, and and people are, are not coming together. Even when tragedy happens, folks come together for a moment, but then they go back to their corners, and their their and their sides, and that is not what God has called us to be. He's called us to be. A unified church. Oh, hallelujah. So here we have, here we have, here we have. In our first part of our lesson, we're going to be talking about the reason for unity. Now, 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 the reason for unity is that we all have one calling. We all have one calling. Listen, listen to the text verses, verses uh, one to three again. Therefore, the I, I the prisoner. Therefore, the the I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to 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 walk worthy of the call in which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond. Of peace, that 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 he, when Paul wrote this to the church at Ephesus, he 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 came with the mindset that 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 look, y'all gotta understand, I'm in prison right now. I, I'm 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 locked up, but 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 I'm not just any kind of prisoner. I'm a prisoner. For the Lord, because I basically got arrested because because I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and His death, His burial, and His resurrection, and, and I, I I was telling everybody I came in contact, whether Jew or Gentile, whether bond or free, I was telling them about the love of Jesus and how much Jesus wanted to to bless them, and so 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 so. I was put in jail because of this. I was put in prison because of this. That's my calling. And I'm doing everything I can to show, Paul says, that I'm worthy of that calling, but he also is encouraging us to be worthy of the calling. Oh, hallelujah. To be worthy of the calling. And, and 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 so here it is. Here it is that 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 he's saying all of us are called. All of us are called 
Not, not it. This is just not. This not just the preacher being called. This, just not the pastor being called. All of us are called into a ministry. And he says, now understand your calling. Now. Be, be with lowliness and gentleness and long-suffering, bearing one another in love. Don't get the big head. Don't get the big head. But, but understand that you've been called. Oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and I want to state this right now. I'm taking a break here because I got a message coming across the line. Uh, uh, sister, sister, uh, Lawanda wants us to, to, to pray, pray for, for, for uh, uh, her mother and her health, and we'll make sure that we do that at the end of the broadcast. I, I'm seeing it, it coming, scrolling across my screen, and we most definitely will be praying. Praise God. Praise God. And, and so he says, let us come together, endeavor to unite. And to have the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And then he goes on, he says, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Oh, hallelujah. One. One. One body. That's the church. Church universal. One. One. Holy Spirit. One. 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 Hope. One. Lord Jesus. One. Faith. One. Baptism. One. God. Father of all. This this chapter, this chapter, uh, I, I I love this chapter because it could be it, be, it could be called uh, 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 one, and then seven, and then five, and we we you'll catch this later because the one is is is, is we have one we have one that, that all of these different ones, but it's seven of them. That's that's the complete ones, and then. Later on, we'll talk about the five, the fivefold ministry. So, 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 so he's telling us the reason for our unity is because we've been called and we've been all called to one body, to one spirit, to one hope, to one Lord, to one faith, to one baptism, and to one. God the Father. And, 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 and I could sit down and we could talk and teach each one of these. And it's so much stuff in just those sayings of those ones. But I just I just want to want to hit it just for, for 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 a minute. We need to realize that if you say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're part of one body. And you, 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 you have one Holy Spirit rest ruling in the body of you, and that same one Holy Spirit that is in you is the same one Holy Spirit that is in me. And we have one hope, one hope. Our hope is that that one glad morning when this life is over, we'll be up in heaven with the Lord. One. And if he decides to come back before we leave and before we die physically, we're going to get caught up with him. That's our one hope. And we have one Lord. God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. And that God raised from the dead. And that whosoever believes in him shall be saved. One, one, one. And we got one faith. We, we, we believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And we have one baptism. The baptism 
of the Holy Spirit when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The baptism of water when we got down into the water and showed the world publicly that what then happened on the inside. That's still one baptism. Because if you, you don't believe in Jesus and you go into the baptismal pool, you're just going to come out a wet sinner. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is in you when you get in that water and you come out, oh, hallelujah, with newness of life. And then he says, one, 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 one God the Father. We believe in one God. And, 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 and the way we say he's got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And some people have the problem with the Trinity. We ain't talking about all that. that that's your problem. I, I can understand the Trinity. Because it's real simple to me. I'm my mama's son. Hallelujah. I'm my wife's husband. I'm my children's father. I'm still the same person. One. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm still the same person. One person. But my roles as father, my, my role as son, my, my role as, as, as father of my children. One, 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 one. Oh, hallelujah. Huh, We're going to move on. We're going to move on to the lesson. Our next part of our lesson is verses 7 through 11. And, and in this lesson, we're talking about the means to obtain unity. The means to obtain unity is really talking about our hope, our one hope. Listen to the text, starting at verse 7. He says, but to each of us, grace has been given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Oh, if I was in church, I'd have you holler, grace, grace. Yes, grace has been given as a gift from Jesus Christ. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captives, captivity captive, and gave gifts to me. Now this, know this, or now this, he ascended. What does it mean that, that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended from above the heavens, and that that he might be feel that he might feel all things, and he gave himself, and he himself, excuse me, gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. For the Lord, for the equipping, excuse me, of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I had to read all the way to 12. I, I had to get 12 in there, uh, but I'm going to come back to 12. So, 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 so here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. The means to obtain this unity came because of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. And he, and he alone, is the one that gives us the hope that we have. Now, now there's some deep stuff in here. I, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with it too much because, cause, cause, cause <laughs> I, every time I look at this text, I remember a sermon uh, this guy preached, uh, Pastor uh, Jeffrey Jefferson, back several years ago when he talked about Jesus ascending on high and he led the capti captivities captive and gave gifts to men. And then what does ascend mean? And mean at first that he descended to the lower parts of the earth. He he said, he said, <laughs> he said, I, I have to laugh about this one. He says, what in hell was Jesus doing? I had to say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it, it's talking about Jesus going down to hell and setting the captives free. That's what he was doing. And, and, and if Jesus, when, when he when he died on that cross, when he went 
went into that, that, that bar tomb and he was working the works that, that God sent him to work to set the captives free. If he would do that for them, oh, hallelujah, what is he going to do for us who are still here on earth? And, and, and we trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that we come together in love, to make sure that we are able to be a blessing to other people because he's blessing us to bless. So here it is. I told you this, this, this text can be one, seven, five. And we, the one is all those ones I talked about, all seven of them. Now listen to the five in verse 11. And he gave, and he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. That's the five-fold ministry. The five-fold ministry. Some are prophets, apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And, and, and the question then becomes, how are you operating? In the fivefold ministry. Are you an apostle? Some say, well, uh, the, the only apostles here are the criteria is to be an apostle. Ah, I don't want to hear all that. Paul, when he made this statement, he, he didn't put any dimensions on the time limit of when apostles can be made. Apostles are those who are called by God to, to plant churches, to, to establish churches, and to keep them going. Some say, we don't have any more prophets. What? God hadn't stopped operating with signs and wonders and able to have people to, 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 to speak his word and, and tell folks what, what has been, what is going on, and what's going to happen? Oh, no. God still has prophets. Now, now, they have problems with the apostles, and, and some have problems with the prophets, but, but they don't have problems with the evangelists other than they don't want to hear nothing that they got to say. But there are those who go out to the hedges and the highways, teaching, preaching, and helping people to understand that if they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, Jesus, they shall be saved from a burning hell. And then we have pastors and teachers. Pastors are, are those good shepherds that are willing to lead and guide and, and direct a, 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 a group of people to shepherd them and show them the way. And then teachers. I always like that they, they say teachers at the end. Because teachers are so special. They, 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 they deal with the children at young ages. They deal with adults at older ages. But teachers have a great responsibility in the church. Some folks say, well, I'm just a Sunday school teacher. You don't know. You're going to be the one that that child remembers all their lives. You're going to be the one that that child go, man, when I went to church and, 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 and for me, I had, I had, I had uh, Coach Wilson as my Sunday school teacher. I never forget Coach Wilson. He, he was also my, 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 my PE teacher in, in, in elementary school. But, but what I remember about him is that he was my Sunday school teacher. And, and, and his guidance and his leading and his way that he taught the word of God to me as a little child meant more to me than anything in the world. Still remember and have good fond memories of my teachers. That's our job. We either got to be all of them or one of them. <laughs> But be 
something. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's, that's our hope. That Jesus gave us what we need to come together. You ain't got to be mad because you, 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 I'm just a teacher. Don't be mad. Be glad. I'm just a pastor. Don't be mad. Be glad. But all I don't have no congregation. I'm just an evangelist. Be don't be mad. Be glad. Ooh, I have to always tell people what, what's going on and all that, and they be mad at me. Don't be mad at yourself because you're a prophet. Let God use you. And those apostles come in correcting and oh, have everybody upset. <laughs> Folks don't want to be corrected. Don't be mad because they don't accept you like that. You've been called to do that job. And each one of us will plant a word or plant a seed that will help somebody. That seed may go deep into their hearts. And it may not grow out and bring fruit till later on. But at least we put the seed of the word of God in. Well, I got to finish this lesson. Our last point is the results of the unity. The results of the unity, verses 12 through 16. That's, that's our church. And I'm going to start back at 11 so that I can put it in context. That's the one church. Listen to it again. And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and for the equipping of the saints. For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come together, or come till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfected man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plots. But speak the truth in love. May grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by whatever, by, by, by whatever joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Several words jump out. This is to equip the saints. Equip the saints to what? To edify the body of Christ. To work the ministry that God has called us to do. To unite us in faith. And then to mature us to the knowledge of the Son of God that we might mature and become uh, in his fullness everything that Christ embodied. Then we'll no longer be children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Because at that point we know that we know that we know him. Not just our doctrine, but that we know him, Jesus Christ, God's living word. And when we get to that point where we know that we know that we know him, when we come together with other brothers and sisters in Christ, our spirits will jump. I had a dream last night. I, I had a dream I was I was uh, lost somewhere and 
I needed directions and and it so happened some way or another I ended up in a church and 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 it was just about service time and I was asking one of the urchins now which direction do I go to 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 get out of here and 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 and, and get to where I want to go and 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 then all of a sudden the pastor he starts coming in and I said hey brother and I shook his hand and and when I shook his hand he he's like whoa he got all excited. He couldn't even go into the pool, but he couldn't even have church because because when our spirits met, we both just started praising God. And I said, "Wow, God, what does that dream mean?" He just said, "He says this is this is what you're going to preach about tomorrow: the unity of the faith. When 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 those of us who love the Lord and know the Lord come together." We will be supplied with everything we need to spread God's word, to spread God's love everywhere we go. Oh, hallelujah. This is a wonderful lesson. We all got ones. One faith. One, one body. One, one Holy Spirit. One hope. One Lord Jesus. One baptism. One. One Father of all. That's the seven ones. And then we have the five, the fivefold ministries, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And we ought to come together in unity, doing our part to bring the body of Christ together and that the body of Christ might grow. And when we all come together as one, I believe that's when God's going to call us all home and come and get us. And we we'll have that new heaven and that new earth. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. My encouragement for you as I close this lesson is to use the gift and talent that God has given you to help us. Like singing in children's choir, like showing love, or singing in any choir, showing love, or helping people out and inviting people to church. Inviting people to, to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then living a life of love. Not just with your lips, but with your whole life. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for your gifts for us that you have given us. Help us to learn how to use them for your glory to your, and for your honor. Keep us humble, Lord. Keep us gentle. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us our church family and helping us to stay together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before I end this broadcast, I always like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. And I like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Um, please repeat it after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried. And that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life. To rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to, to help me obey you. And to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you truly believe, um, you are now saved. And we invite you to join yourself with a local body of believers that you might be baptized, that you might grow and mature in the faith. Amen. We are going to close the Facebook live right now and going to the conference call portion of our lesson 
that conference calls where we can interchange and, and have a conversation with one another. The number to call is 619-639-4733. Uh, 619-639-4733. And before I end, I did promise um, um, Sister Luanda that I'll be praying. So I'm going to pray on the, on the Facebook Live before we go into the conference call. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, Sister Luanda calling out for prayer for her mother. Lord, we just ask you to touch right now. If I'm, if, if I'm mistaken on what I'm asking prayer for, you know more than I do. That you touch as, as her family member gets ready to go through surgery and, and, and touch all the things that she's standing in the need of. Touch the hospitals, touch the doctors, the anesthesiologists, touch, Lord, whatever she stands in the need of. And then, Lord, bless, bless the family that they might come together in prayer with no animosity among them, that they just, just seek your face. We thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Talk to you later, Facebook. Bye-bye.